Hello. How's it going? A penny on I'm running out of floor space for my calculations. <laughs> well, just be careful. By the way, what's your name, young lady? Joe. Oh, that's a nice name. Well, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Mary, I just bought some cookies. I'll put them under. The I'll take that psycho. Camera, random acts. So it'll spoil my dinner. Oh, that reminds me. As long as I'm staying here, I better call my maid and tell her I won't be home. Okay. Hello? Hello, Pauline. This is Miss Livingston. Well, I won't be home for dinner, so I thought you'd like to know you could have. Pauline, are you still crying? Pauline, you gotta get a grip on yourself. You've been carrying on like this. Brain tank. Okay, more. Oh, my. Holy shit. I found the Mentat stash. All the drugs. All of the drugs. I will take them. So hard to tell these days. Uh, you seem familiar somehow. I'm guessing uh, you're here for your brain, perhaps? Uh, it's just up there. Uh, such a nice brain, young, very bright. A uh, little hard to see you. Uh, can you walk into my left, uh, right FOV coon? Ah, that's it. You're coming into focus nicely. Is that better? Depth perception is a problem with this old monitor of mine. Went black a while ago. <laughs> That's old age for you. Should look at getting the visual nerves reattached. It's just that the right eye would see the wrong things. The <laughs> flying tortoises oh, were the worst. Would you care for a mentat? Uh, thanks. <sighs> I love Mentats. Delicious and smarty. I have all sorts of amazingly <laughs> science-horrific thoughts and ideas when those chalky tablets are zipping through my biogel. I forget them all not long after, though. Especially with the data constipating my memory core. Afraid binary streams might shoot out my chassis. Had to start using the dome floor and walls here to inscribe equations. Although I've somewhat lost track of where they start and end. You aren't exactly what I was expecting. Really? That implies preconceived notions, theories, and a hypothesis about this meeting? Please extrapolate. What was I uh, supposed to be like? 
After all, it might be worth a cognitive realignment if your theoretical Mobius is better than I. I need my brain back. Do you? You seem fine without it. And does it even want to go back with you? Maybe you should ask it. What? It's quite independent. Has all manner of opinions. <laughs> Tell you what, I'll leave it up to your brain. If it wants to go, then fine. If not, well, you should respect its wishes. I was curious about some things. Oh, curiosity. I experienced that less now that I know everything. Oh, maybe it was when I found out some unpleasant answers. Mm -hmm. I can't fix your monitor, but if you're getting ghost reception, I can fix that. The ghosts aren't real? That changes everything. Why, I can save my computing power for other perceptual impossibilities. Please be my guest. Uh, the receptor is there. And the side-switching wobbly bob, uh, just turn that. Good, good. Better? Oh. oh, oh yes, that feels wonderful. Mm, this is even better than my afternoon mentats break. Mm. I took all of them. Why did you steal my brain? Oh, a variety of reasons. You're something of a homily, the uh, anomaly. You're really quite special, and not in the cranially challenged way. You see, you are the most successful brain extraction experiment ever performed here at Big Mountain. A victim of your own success, as it were. If you were to go back with what your brain knows about the procedure, well, your brain could be popped back in and you could walk right out of here. Can't have brains moving around of their own volition. Why is that a problem? I'm not sure, except that I'm sure there's a very good reason for it. I have very good reasons for almost everything I do. Even if I forget them occasionally. This dude's you amazing. Know, I feel this one is especially important. <laughs> oh, well... I was curious about some things. I find things curious as well. Go on. You don't seem aggressive. Why broadcast threats to the think tank? Oh, I was probably tripping hard on Psycho when I sent that. Had to work myself up to it. Not usually violent. Except when I am. Then, <laughs> watch out! So many chems, such varieties. Whenever I take Mentats, I can feel my entire chassis breathe like a big... He literally psycho. had to dose himself on Psycho to send those. As for the Psycho, sometimes get the chem dispositories in my tank all switched up. Go in the wrong tube. Still, served its purpose. I was curious about some things. Yes, yes, this is getting interesting. You are just filled with these little slices of curiosity, aren't you? Can you tell me about your Robo Scorpions? Well, every scientist needs an army. Mine came to me after these rather large scorpions kept coming in from the dessert. <laughs> like the dessert is frosting. How scary, I thought. But they had survived when nothing else had. Perfect candidates for improvement as a reward for their tenacity. Then I thought, what if they shot energy bolts and acted as walking eyes and data drained computers and acted as bullhorns? Then I made them bigger. Then I thought about custard. I do so love custard. Or oh, was it mustard? Mustard custard. Mm, I miss sugars and salts. So, sounds like you built the Robo The Robo Scorpions issued threats to the keep the think tank occupied. Did I? 
<laughs> Maybe I did. Can't have them leaving. Some reason for it. Ethics or, uh, mm, conscience? You and your brain are quite alike. I'm sure it knows the reasons better than I do. Everything you've told me doesn't add up. Your plan, even your name. Mobius. Dr. Mobius. Rather catchy, isn't it? It's my name, and my new name overwrote the old one. This name's as real as you or I. Although I believe your brain expressed similar incredulity at the nature of such an appellation. Hey, Lego. Someone's been watching too many old Lego Capitan Porto. Good luck on the stream. Said, Thank you. I appreciate I that. I believe it meant me. I must admit I have a vulnerability for holotape fantasies of planets and robots and all that is forbidden. As for the name I was born with, like the think tank, we were all reprogrammed to forget them, take on new names. It enforces the recursion loop in our perception programming. You reprogram their names as part of recursion loop. What, to trap their processors? Now, trap is a rather harsh word, like... But yes, welcome in, hope you're doing well. Not an inappropriate word, but still rather harsh. But, yes, I did uh, take some liberties with their programming. It's all right, they don't remember. I certainly didn't until you said trap, and then I said excrement, and then... <laughs> Why did you... Recursion loop is designed to prevent the flow of information, so... The radar fence to keep the think tank hemmed in wasn't really enough. They keep testing things. They would have found a way to disarm it. I suspect I have Plan 9s in place, but I may have coded myself to forget them, just in case. They're probably very dangerous, lethal, or worse. So I had to do something else to keep them occupied here. Or as you like to say, trapped. I prefer to have several Plan 9s in case the 7s fail. Klein, Mobius, O's a circle, eights an infinity symbol. They're all loops. I get it. Oh, you figured it out. No pun intended. Dr. O, which is actually not his real name multiplied, since you can't multiply his real name in the first place. Oroboros, Klein, they have all forgotten themselves. And not only themselves, but the world, sense of time and history. All that is left is what's here. I reprogrammed their chronometers, geometers, and cartography programs. This is now their world, here, Big Mountain. It was a merciful lobotomy, really, thinking back. They were my friends, but sometimes they would take things too far. And the world isn't ready for that kind of too far thing taking. That's my professional opinion, anyway. And I am told I was once <laughs> quiet professional. Intelligence. Minor detail, but a snake devouring its own tail is Ouroboros, not Ouroboros. Ouroboros. Really? It is so unlike me to make an error in anything I do. I don't understand why you sent the threats in the Robo-Scorpion army against the think tank. Well, it's simple. Despite their many failings, they are rather bright. They are the think tank for a reason. That I didn't change. Without something to distract them, make them afraid, they would simply deduce what had happened. And when they start deucing it up... Then you came along, the final variable solved. 
They saw that their world was larger than they perceived. Bacteria finally able to see its host. But there must have been signs of a larger world. There have been other visitors to make them doubt their perceptions, but you are the one who dialed back their monitor micromagnifiers. You were irrefutable proof that there was a world outside. And then there was the whole brain fiasco, which forced me to take steps. See, your brain had a special kind of uh, a wrinkle, a uniquity that they had never thought to try in all their countless escape attempts. Hmm. A cranial injury from the attack outside Good Springs. Yes, very good. I should have Mentats ingest you instead of the other way around. Hmm, Mentats. In any event, you showed up at the think tank, and because you had suffered a cranial injury in just the right place, bullets in the head are usually much more fatal, and yours was a light case of bullet headitis. But it was enough for How dare the you bonk me in the sink to change its programming to fix the problem. And the brain extraction technology for once. Hey Scarlet, worked. welcome in. That gave the think tank the knowledge its brains shouldn't uh, couldn't uh, couldn't possess. With that knowledge, the procedure can be reversed. If they obtain that procedural data, they can use it to mush and modify their cranial cells into hosts to slip past the radar fence. I'm sure of it. Hmm. And once they're off the reservation... Klein said they had the idea to get the three technologies after your broadcast. Coincidence? I consider coincidence to be profanity. Along with the words astrology, herbal tea, and luck. So watch it, potty mouth. <laughs> My threat broadcast is designed to instill and install fear. And along with the emotional download, other data rides the fear carrier wave. It prompted them to focus on retrieving those technologies and bring them to attack me. And coincidentally, pardon my language, all those technologies are needed to put a brain, uh, your brain, back into its skull properly. Ah. But the think tank downloaded the schematics, not the uh, items. They can rebuild them. Oh, that means my plan is a total failure. That is unfortunate. Oh, well, at least I tried. Hmm. Was there any other data transmitted in your threat broadcast? Yes. My overly aggressive Camda broadcast was designed to keep reinforcing the forget, fear, rinse, and repeat program. Oh, and the get me the things to castrate your only possible escape attempt. But I couldn't delete you or your arrival any more than I could the other visitors. Only so much science can do when you started talking to them. You're really quite difficult to <laughs> ignore, you know. It's because you're, well, bah, rather intriguing, if you'll forgive an old brain for saying so. What's the purpose of the technologies? The X2 antenna can be used to focus your alpha wave frequency thought patterns. The sneaky suit? Why, it houses a cardiac regulator. And the sonic sound wave projecto emitter was never intended as a weapon. It was a medicinal vertebrae pulse desensitizer. In short, brains, a heart, and courage. Spine. I think there was a story once where a band of murderous thugs sought these things. They had them all the time in the story. Didn't stop them from murdering to get them. 
And it won't stop the think tank either. God damn. Time for me to go. Indeed. The uh, goodbye part of our little chat then. Uh, goodbye. Uh, please mind the equations on the floor. Okay, okay, here we go. All right. Okay. Get explosive sub to, I'd say, 50. Actually, let's say 45. Okay, we've got heave ho. See anything else down here? I grabbed broad daylight since learned. Mm. Precious reader. Them's good eating. Eye for eye. Computer wizards. No. Wondering light armor? No. Oh hell no. Five percent. Fight the power. Oh, there's actually like Okay, I need more endurance for that. Exception. Oh, geez, nope. There was quick draw. Okay, would need. Not. What is it? Light touch. 
No. Rapid reload. Okay. Honestly, I'm going to put a point into agility. Done. I do so love integers. Oh, thanks. Oh. Hi. How's it going? Well, well, look who finally dragged themselves in out of the wasteland. And where have we been? Hmm? Crawling through bits of radioactive muck again? Are, are you my brain? Ah, lovely. Figure that out, have we? Would you like a cookie? Why are you such a dick? Well, that's a fine how do you do. Me, a uh, quote, dick, unquote. As if I'm the one responsible for the way you carry on gadding about the wastes. I'm not the one that makes us clamber around technus infested ancient vaults or go charging off to New Vegas on missions of ill-conceived revenge. And have we forgotten who got us shot in the head and buried in a shallow grave? Hmm? Do you think I enjoy that little moment? <laughs> Of course you're responsible. You're my brain. I most certainly am not. I'm the seat of all reason and logic in our little partnership. All those feelings that motivate you, that sense of righteousness and that rush you get when you help someone, do you know where those come from? Glands. They come from glands. Free of the tyranny of your ape-like and primitive endocrine system. I can see how foolish your motives are. But you're the source of most of those glands, unless you're arguing that my thyroid is to blame. I... Well... <laughs> look, Fuck it's you. all a very complex system of biofeedback and other things I wouldn't expect you to understand. Admit it, you're just as glandular as I am. Oh, alright. Perhaps I am, but at least I'm logical about it. Don't you want to be reunited? I thought you'd be happy to get back into my head. I'm not going to lie to you. The prospect is definitely not that appealing. Look at it from my perspective. Here I have peace, quiet, and safety. Well, barring the odd rogue scorpion. In your head, I've got poison, radiation, <laughs> grisly injuries, and biological functions. <laughs> Do you know? How much more you can get done when you're not constantly looking for places to urinate? Hey. It's quite a lot, I can tell you. I can see your point. What can I do to make this a fair compromise? If you want me back, we need to establish some ground rules. First, showers! <laughs> Second, regular checkups. Regular, mind you. And from a reputable doctor. That Julie Farkas woman, for example, she seems to know a thing or two. Third, you need to listen to me more than your hormonal choir and genitalian orchestra. Promise me that, and you've got a deal. Fine, you've got a deal. Really? Hm. I didn't expect you to actually agree to that. I'm afraid that was a bit of a bluff, really. I'm not going with you. Uh, that's so what you, you'd, what, you'd rather just stay here, never leaving that tank of whatever that stuff is? Biogel, I think? Well, certainly there might be some things I miss about being ambulatory. We have seen some incredible sights, haven't we? Jason Bright and his followers launching into the vast unknown. Helios One coming back online. But still, given the tremendous, potentially life-ending peril that went along with those, yes. Yes, I'd rather stay here. Isn't it just as true that you only feel this way because you're lacking those hormones? Hmm, I suppose you're right. That does call certain assumptions into question, doesn't it? So we're at an impasse. You can't feel what I feel, and I can't think the way you think. Indeed, quite the conundrum. How do you suppose we resolve it? 
I think we have to trust each other and acknowledge that we aren't complete if we're separated. I suppose there might be some advantage to that, yes. There's a chance that the reintegration would create some improved synergy between us. So what do you say, Brain? Join me for some more wild adventures? Well, I suppose you've convinced me well enough. I'll rejoin your body if that's your final decision. Unfortunately, before we get to that stage of the proceedings, we have a problem. Even if I could settle myself back in your skull and reconnect all those pesky nerve endings, Dr. Mobius doesn't have the tools here. We would have to make use of Dr. Klein's lab, and I rather doubt the brains are inclined to share. Why? They promised to put us back together once I did what they wanted. And you believe them? Really? I know you were recently deprived of my fabulous advice, but... Really? Once I'm delivered into their clutches, they'll find a way past the radar fence and the whole Mojave will be their playground. And that is assuming, of course, that one of them doesn't take a fancy to our body and decide to slip his own brain into it instead. You're part of me. I know you don't want to let that happen any more than I do. Well, I suppose I do miss those endorphin rushes when we save the day. All right. What's the plan? If the think tank won't hold up their bargain, we'll make them. Let's go. Right. Look out, think tank. This brain is coming out of its jar. I suppose now that we're reunited, you'll want to fill your torso up with those other meaty parts the Think Tank took from us. Yeah. Personally, I think your upgrades are quite a bit better. But now that I'm with you, the Sync's Autodoc can plug them back in no problem. Right then, off we go. Clyde will be in for a nasty shock when he realizes the pacification field won't work on a mind and body reunited. Your brain. Oh. Okay, but my question is Would there Where is it? Yeah, can no longer be crippled or like would it be better to just have those? Like legitimately I don't know I want my brain I'm literally carrying my brain. This is amazing. Bye, Robo Scorpion. Uh, what you, number do you want me to play today? The same one you have been practicing for... 
was the hat. Oh, yes. Here, I'll get my violin out of it. Oh, wait. You will in a minute. Hey! Hey! I got a super rare Mojave snow globe here. Here we are. All you gotta do is reach down into my bread slot. Just a second, I. I better see. Uh. Not make any Might I be of service, sir? The hat. Okay, uh, item. No, 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 Mr. Benny. Every week you make the same mistake. How many times do I have to tell you which is not da 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 Save again. Require some addition. I'll, I'll get it this time. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh. Healing. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm sorry. You require some addition. Enter a double. It loses something in the translation, but it means you think. Okay. Oh, shit. You know, we'll stick with it. Shall I, shall I take it again? We, 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 we. Uh. <laughs> Where? place in your head okay okay uh. dr. Klein awaits yeah I just saved let's do this what's up the lobotomite returns Lobotomite. Has Dr. Mobius been denominated into scrap metal and voice module parts as we hoped? I found my brain. Now you and I are going to settle things. I recommend watching your tone with me, Lobotomite. Now, your brain. Hand it over, or we'll extract it again. I'm not handing my brain over it. There's some things we should discuss. And what could we possibly have to speak about? You have the brain. We have the technology. All you must do is surrender. With it, we can finally leave this place. I cannot tell you how boring this place gets, chopping up the landscape and everything in it. And we have so many questions to ask your brain first about this Mojave place. A fertile testing ground for our experiments. Speech. You think I am the lobotomite? No, for my school house is the brain of Mobius. That is the most insane thing I've ever heard. There's no way Mobius would condescend to step inside you. Besides, there's no way such a thing could be accomplished. It's impossible. Nothing is impossible for science. Mesons, lasers, atoms, brainwaves, all are at my command. You speak the truth, and the decibel variation in your voice <laughs> it is Mobius. 
How dare you breach the sink tank? And what do you want here? He, er, I offer a deal. Stay here. Stay put. And he'll... I'll let you live. That's no deal at all. There's a whole world beyond the crater, filled with ideas and possibilities. We could have escaped, seen it all for ourselves, tested it, prodded at it, made it squirm. Hmm. I will permit you to do this for me. Partner with you, my foe, my rival, my foremost critic? I have a strange sensation that I would like that. How odd. Very well, partner. The think tank is at your service as long as you do not destroy us. Hmm. And here is the director of the Old Gold Comedy Theater, Mr. Harold Lloyd. Leave. Do you like me? Oh. Our play tonight is at home. As it had been in the years of hey. the Great War, Big Mountain, the Big Empty, became home to one of the brightest minds of the 23rd century. The courier watched over the Big Empty for years to come, caring for it and keeping its discoveries safe until they were needed to help others which had always been Big Mountain's purpose. Past the laboratories and science, it had always been intended as a place to build the future of all mankind. The courier had scoured much of the Big Empty, although secrets still remained in the crater's depths. Perhaps that was for the best, however. Curiosity, while sometimes rewarded for its efforts, often proves to be equally dangerous. Dr. Mobius continued his research undisturbed in the Forbidden Zone. As much as he had attempted to create better scorpions, he tried the <laughs> same with humanity, with considerably less success. These failures didn't bother him over much. Once the rush of Mentats wore off, he forgot he had failed in any event. After all, the bright young mind who had come to visit him in the Forbidden Zone had already exceeded his expectations. The sink atop the dome bustled with the voices of a small town, constantly chirping, hey, and snarling at each other. Still, this all happened productively in the interests of its new owner. The sink Central Intelligence Unit discovered, despite its inversion code, it was comforted by the sense of community the other personalities gave it. The biological research station, obsessed with seeding everything in sight, requested a transfer to the X-22 Botanical Garden, so that it might, in its own words, sensually fertilize the garden's smooth contours. The garden sent back a polite refusal, saying it had prior commitments with a vault it had helped infect before the war. The book shoot continued to devour all seditious materials until it nearly choked on a paperclip. It adamantly maintained it was a Chinese paperclip, and the <laughs> whole thing had been an elaborately orchestrated assassination attempt. Whatever the reason, it slowed down for a while, carefully appraising each document and clipboard that came to it. The light switches continued to bicker and flicker. This persisted until the day someone dropped a flashlight in the sink, and the two of them united in their hatred of the showboat. <laughs> the sink continued to ruthlessly scrub any particulate matter that came near it. Eventually, it gained access to the magneto hydraulics plant and nearly flooded all the big empty in an attempt to scrub the crater clean. The toaster continued its psychotic spree, reducing all appliances in range to scrap electronics and spare parts. I love the toaster. After one of its more psychotic episodes, however, 
the other sink personalities decided enough was enough and dumped the toaster in a bathtub. Sparking and hissing, the toaster swore its enemies would rue the day when they had bread and no way to toast it. Muggy did his best. <laughs> <laughs> That's an amazing shot. It might have been the end for poor Muggy. Except he found it peaceful there, tidying up the kitchens of the think tank professors back when they had been flesh and bone. Well, except for Dr. O, who was an asshole for having created Muggy in the first place. Muggy left O's house deliberately dirty. Punishing the dishes and cups that live there in blind revenge for serving Dr. O. Blind Owl Jefferson, with sounds the courier brought him, created a symphonic counter frequency that saved Big Mouth from sonic invasion in 2019. If you didn't hear about it, good. It was rumored by the other personalities that he had a brief fling with the light switches. Although he forgot their names once too often and was soon left in the dark as punishment. Autodoc, always gentle and methodical, kept sewing up the courier in all the right places when the skin split open from repeated wear and tear. The Autodoc was just glad to have purpose again. It heard its simpler brothers and sisters who got shipped to the Sierra Madre bored out of their skulls in that toxic dead city. In time, the Autodoc found a way to deactivate the Y-17 trauma harnesses, releasing the corpses they had held prisoner for almost 200 years. Hey. As the courier ran through the X-8 facility multiple times, the computers analyzed the test subject's movements. Rather than performing a superficial observation, they realized the subject barely knew what communism was, or even what a high school was. Yeah, it's fair. This confused them for a time, until the facility finally realized that its research had succeeded. So it let its cyber dogs out into the wastes to help protect small communities from physical aggression rather than communist propaganda. The infiltration program in X-13 felt spent, having repeatedly upgraded the stealth suit until it could upgrade it no more. It felt warm, fulfilled, and a bit sluggish. It realized not long after, the stealth suit had left it without so much as a note on the nightstand. So the infiltration program sent out robo-brains into the wastes, looking for its wayward technology. It eventually found Repcon HQ and set up a new research center, testing and murdering fiends who kept breaking into the facility. <laughs> the courier, organs intact, continued onwards, a little less heavy of step, but with all the organs in the right places, as they should be. Yeah. After all, brains can develop a life of their own when left to their own thoughts. And the courier's brain was more clever than most. Dr. Klein and the think tank remained alive, unaware of the world outside. They looped through their daily routine, none the wiser about the world beyond. Although perhaps wiser was the wrong word. The world outside belonged to the courier. And if anyone would shape it, well, the courier had already called dibs. Yep. There is an expression in the wasteland, old world blues. It refers to those so obsessed with the past, they can't see the present, much less the future, for what it is. They stare into the what was, eyes like pilot lights, guttering and spent as the realities of their world continue on around them. Science is a long, steady progression into the future. What may seem a sudden event often isn't felt for years, even centuries to come. In the times following the Second Battle of Hoover Dam, however, Old World Blues took on a new meaning. 
Where once it was viewed as a form of sadness, nostalgia, it became an expression describing the potential for the future. It can be easy to see science as evil, technology unchecked as the source of all ills, all misfortunes. With the courier at the helm, science became a beacon for the future. Hey. There was old world blues, and new world hope, and hope ruled the day at Big Mountain. We could say more, but the stories in the big empty speak for themselves. Now armed with the transportal ponder, the courier could return to the dome at any time and crack open the secrets of the big empty one by one. Oh, cool. The sink sat vigilant, waiting for its master to return, shoes covered in Mojave dust. Only one road yet remained, and it was one the courier had to walk alone. Yeah. A lonesome road, you could say. Hey. Gained the big brain. Your dynamic by ten percent. And you alone. Hey. And another level. All right. Yay, the curious organs are intact. Just looking around at Caesar's League. Oh, really? Since 2.0, Crescent Canyon, the long 15, Canyon Wreckages, where the next DLC is. What's up? All right. Oh, I'm back in the motherfucking wasteland. Without leadership, the fiends are as good as dead. Hell yeah. Fuck the fiends. And legitimately, I don't know if there is a better, like, Big MT was in the show. I hope we see Dr. Mobius in season two. Oh, do you have good raisins? Okay. I'll be legit. The advanced layer is probably the only one. Right, shotgun. 
Honestly, both of you can. Okay. But with that, we have finished Old World Blues. And I hope you tune in tomorrow when we start walking the Lonesome Road. Goodbye, YouTube.